Hallo en welkom bij Farmboek. Um, ik kijk hier zo samen met Cotton SA en uh, ik kijk een beetje naar bijproducten. En ik praat met die mannen van de EU in. En, uh, ik zal niet zo met Steven en hij het in diepte studie gedoen uh, oor dit en hij gaan bykie met ons meer aan praat en dan sal ons bykie oor na die Engels toe so dat um, hy saam kan praat Steven, how are you? Fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you Steven, quickly, can you tell us what's the, what's the idea about uh, this next three days of Cotton SA and um, with your UNCTAD? Yeah, um, basically this is a regional workshop uh, on cotton byproducts um, you know, uh, you have seen, you know, studies that have been done and they have actually not shown that um, uh, the attractiveness of cotton uh, has actually not been going down with regard to you know, the export of the main product which is lint. Mm -hmm. uh, so different institutions, you know, have been actually looking at ways of bringing this attractiveness of the cotton value chain. And, one that area is the cotton byproducts. You know. So the, the United uh, Nations on Conference and Development, UNCTAD, uh, working with the Comesa and UNECA, they actually now identified you know, the cotton byproducts um, as you know an avenue that can you know increase the attractiveness um, of the cotton value chain. Uh, so um, this project um, was developed and it is being implemented you know, in uh, four countries, uh, that is Uganda, uh, Tanzania, uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Uh, the project now started in 2016-2017 uh, and it's actually coming to an end. So this regional workshop basically is actually to look at uh, how this uh, project has run and uh, uh, what you know, activities or lessons learned uh, have come from this uh, project. If we look at these byproducts, if we look at the uh, briquettes, um, and we've seen it work well um, in India, um, do you think India does that well because of the amount they can produce? Or is it, is it economics of scale? Or is it purely because they have better systems in place at this point because we have not seen the same success in, in the rest of Africa mm -hmm. and the studies done? Uh, yeah, then in India, and I think it's a great, from my point perspective, it is a great uh, energy yeah. source. Um, so, is it, is it meant for Africa? Do how do Africa solve and get involved to make sure that they uh, follow the success of India? Yeah, you know there are certain factors actually, uh, you know, force countries not mm. to enter into briquette mm. you know, making or pallet making. Mm. Uh, I think one of them is the cost of, for example, you know fuel, mm. you know, the cost of electricity, um, and you know, other areas are actually, you know, with regard to the issues of deforestation. Mm. Um, I think, you know, from the Indian perspective, basically, uh, I think it has to do with, uh, you know, maybe, you know, the, the, the huge industrial base which they have, mm. and which has been using power. And uh, briquettes are, have been seen as an alternative, you know, source of energy, you know, cheaper energy. Um, I think you know one example which uh, I got you know, from colleagues that visited India was um, you know the use of uh, briquettes in um, uh, rubber industry. You know, uh, yeah. this industry that they are making you know fan belts, you know, from uh, rubber. Um, why into that? You know, because basically it's a cheaper source of energy. So you know, when we come you know, to our Af uh, African countries, you know, there are also you no know, certain factors that can force you know, the country uh, to start producing briquettes at a larger scale. Of course, you know, uh, the cost of electricity, and of course, you know, uh, the cost of charcoal. Um, you know, when you look at um, uh, our small older farmers. Um, uh, even you know, urban as well as uh, uh, rural farmers, they actually rely more on wood fuel as well as charcoal you know, fuel. Um, and you know, you have seen how that has contributed to for deforestation. You know, so maybe that could be an entry point, you know, for governments to ensure that you know, they produce. The, you know, they, yeah. they, they give awareness, you know, for this new uh, fuel uh, energy, you know, 
which is uh, being uh, you know promoted as briquettes mm. uh, because now why you know briquettes briquettes are actually produced uh, from uh, agricultural resources mm. or agricultural waste mm. which in most cases yeah, is just you know thrown or yeah, plowed back here yeah, mm -hmm. uh, in the soil so that can be an entry point quick on this point if you look at if you look at uh, your big scale farmers uh, mm -hmm. your commercial farmers uh, which of the bright products would you say is most profitable we know uh, uh, the, the oil is quite a big part of it is it in South Africa a big part of it I am do, do South Africans make full use of their byproducts? Would you say? Um, with regard to oil? to any byproduct, to oil yeah, or byproducts? You know, actually, no. What we have seen, mm. you know, from mm. uh, the ginning mm. companies that are supporting cotton production, mm. I think most of them, they, you know, they have started you know, going into uh, oil milling, mm. you know, using the cotton seed. I think that's. Another alternative, especially not to cushioning uh, the cost of production and also not making a bit of profit, because just focusing on lint alone, you know, sometimes it becomes you know uh, tricky. But you know, when you bring in another you know line of income, income. like uh, mm. briquet, like you know, uh, edible oil production or processing. Can be a source of extra income that can cushion the cost of production for, for the main crop which is left. Do you guys have a have a future plan to market these byproducts as a as a collective to make sure that this concept goes out to the to the public? It gets taken grabbed for by uh, by entrepreneurs so they can know the value of it and make sure. Uh, do we have a plan, or is this if is this going to be part of our discussion for the next two days? No, you know I think looking at this. Uh, individual mm. countries, you know, they're actually looking at how now they can commercialize mm. this aspect. But mm. I actually don't agree with you if we, we take as a, we take it as a block, mm. you know, as a region mm. in promoting this. Mm. I think it can get, you know, the mm. bigger traction yeah. in the actualizing mm. uh, this new... Yeah, I think uh, if, if, if we can see the, tell people the health benefits yes. of cooking with, uh, if, with uh, these oils, it should do, it should do a lot easier. And then create a need, maybe just not just in Africa, but in Europe, and then yeah. start exporting yeah. this to Europe. As we know, Europe is very, yeah. very uh, healthy, yes. health conscious. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, yeah. thank you for talking to us, thank and you. Uh, thank hopefully, you. I'll talk to you a little later in the conference. Thank you. Okay. okay. Cheers, okay. guys. That was Stephen. Uh, he talked to us about uh, the byproducts. Uh, we will probably catch up with him a little later, and uh, we'll talk some more about uh, the byproducts.